Hello everyone and welcome to another Transformers review. Now as with the Stepper review I thought I would do another of my reissue G1 Transformers. Now this one isn't absolutely in fantastic condition. I did get it dirt cheap um, some time ago now. Um, it had been previously owned and was a sort of like not greatly well treated as you'll see um, but as you see it is G1 Crown and he's from the reissue Takara I suppose this would have been the line um, number two in the set now as with Stepper the box is one of the ones where it's got the artwork and the sort of pages in the front um, as I say, this isn't in fantastic condition, this box. The first couple of pages are fine, there's a nice sort of G1 style cartoon sort of version of Prowl. He's car mode and a couple of the G1 cartoon sort of images. But as you go on through the book, it's a nasty old rip. Now I only assume somebody tried to tear the pages out and made a bit of a cock up of it. Um, but that aside, there's still the nice artwork bit there about Megatron and I think that must have been the reissue Megatron where he came with a sword and the uh, blue pellets where he used to fire and the blue whether that harkens back to the diaclone times I'm not sure possibly because obviously G1 Megatron was red inside the legs there but uh, yeah it's a little bit of a shame the book's a little bit mucked up I haven't put tape on it or anything to try and repair it just for the sake that that usually discolours and mucks it up, I'll try and do something with it at some point. Um, but also, you see there where everything's been taken off. Now the other downside with this particular one, watch I picked up, is the gun is also broken, the tip of the gun's been broken off. So although there's a nice new chromed gun, it's damaged. So for the sake of this review, I'm using one of my old smokescreen weapons uh, for his actual gun which is a little bit chrome worn but not too bad but for the review at least you get to see what his weapon should have looked like and the box itself other than the damage is the usual sort of reissue bits with all the Japanese writing on it and picture there skids and tracks and jazz and G1 line at the back there as well but yeah so a pretty standard fare for the reissue boxes now getting on to the figure, uh, the main thing you get of course is a very nice black and white police car uh, modelled on I think it's a, is it a Datsun 240Z something like that I believe from the time um, really nice sports car mode anyway uh, reused slightly differently in smoke screen and again in silver streak as well but obviously not as a police car. Uh, really nice design. Obviously, this harkens back to the Diaclone years and Microman before Transformers were actually Transformers. Now, as for accessories, on the reissue, they did keep them reasonably accurate to the original. You've got a left and right shoulder mounted launcher. So, you get two of those, and they're handed with a peg on the opposite sides you do get three missiles now for the sake of this I've only bothered to get two of them out of the box now they're still okay and they're properly chromed as the originals would have been and this is where we're departing back and it's an original car with some chrome wear as you can see you know the reds coming through a little bit through the chrome there but it's exactly the same weapon as uh, on smoke screen so it's exactly the same for Prowl but as I say it's just a little bit chrome worn on this one anyway get into the car I'll bring that in so you can have a bit better look around it um, pretty faithful reproduction of the G1 Jazz uh, G1 Jazz what am I saying G1 Prowl uh, I would say one thing though whether it's due to the other person who owned it or just a sort of thing what this is prone to but the stickers are actually peeling worse on this than they actually are on my G1's originals so 
what that happens to say about the sticker quality I don't know I'll leave that up to you it could just be the previous owner didn't give it the right sort of treatment maybe um, got a rough sign on the front there I'm not sure that's where it would have been on the original I have a feeling it would have been around here but on the box it's showing it sort of right onto the left side of the bonnet there but again sort of that's a bit subjective and that may well have been fitted at the factory anyway but anyway getting to his transformation he's quite simple and very similar to Jazz and most of the sort of G1 Autobot cars uh, first of all you've got to open his doors you've then got to extend the rear section away which is to lengthen his legs you then lift the back end of the car around and this uh, then gives you the chance you've got to flip up his sort of groin part and again we'll leave that alone for uh, some mickey taking spin the whole bottom section around and close it back down to lock it in place and as with all the G1 cars you've got to separate the bottom parts to form the separate sort of legs to give it a bit of a gap in between and that unfortunately is his legs done now it's a little bit of a shame I actually prefer the way Jazz's legs work where he's got the fold up sort of shin guard bits and they really could have just kept his legs that way around rather than revolving the bottom part but you know it's a uh, nearly well, what we're getting on to now over 20 years of design things have updated a little bit and they go a bit more complicated now uh, as with the arms at the front, exactly the same as G1 Jazz, Smokescreen and Silver Streak. You just pop the fists off the little posts on the arms and then just sort of straighten them out a little bit for clearance and then just fold them around like so. And then you need to revolve the whole front section of the car down like that and then just sort out the arms a little bit and as you can see you've got a sticker on the shoulder which denotes the front of the arm like so and then obviously we'll do the head reveal as the last bit you just pull the uh, sort of roof down carefully and his head pops up now with Jazz you need to pull that back slightly but with Prowl you don't but uh, it's always a sort of part you should be very careful I'll just revolve that now. with all of the G1s and probably to some degree with these reissues that little section there where his head is where it joins the windscreen there is always prone to snap and you probably see more of these damaged and snapped than you'll probably see complete and intact uh, you often sort of see them on eBay and stuff like that where they're damaged for the actual transformation if you was going to have it in robot mode it actually doesn't really affect it because it's only a little bit of kibble in robot mode so if you weren't too worried and you only wanted to display him as a robot you could probably get away with it but you know I got this simply for the fact that to find a G1 uh, prowl in good condition to be honest is well let's put it this way it's extremely difficult and you have to pay an extremely large amount of money to get a really good one unless you're dead lucky anyway getting to his accessories these little posts what are on the side just peg in to <laughs> effectively his ears there's two holes one either side of his head and you peg the launcher line that up correctly straight into the side of his head now it might have been better if they'd have maybe made a port onto the bonnet but the bonnet on the car and the rear section down here the rear wings are die still die cast metal even on the reproductions and reissues such as this so 
maybe that was a little bit difficult for them to actually do that back in the original days. Um, it's a little, you know, it sort of makes things a little bit awkward. Obviously, he's got no head articulation anyway due to the transformation, but yeah, it's a little bit of a shame. Obviously, things like the classics lines and that have obviously updated these designs, so there's far more articulation in those, uh, which is, you know, kind of what we'd have liked in G1, but you know, you've got to still hand it to them. For the time, these G1 cars were pretty sort of fantastic, really. Uh, the designs back then were still where you might say now uh, some of the modern toys, how elaborate and fantastic they are. Well, back in the 80s, this was that level. Uh, you got to remember we had sort of hardly any sort of computers um, and games consoles and all that sort of thing was like in its infancy. So this kind of thing was still pretty well, amazing, really, to be honest. Um, anyway, that's enough of me waffling about that, my youth. Uh, getting back to the figure, obviously you can load the rockets into each of the launchers. Now I'm not sure, there's a little button on top, I'll hold it, yep, they do still launch, okay, which obviously the G1s did, but I know some of the reissues, they didn't like having actually launching missiles, because Obviously, kids are going to blind themselves by being stupid. Um, can't remember anyone out for actually doing that back in the 80s, but there you go. Health and safety. Anyway, last thing first. Uh, last thing first. Last thing uh, to do is, of course, fit his gun in his hand, and that is G1 Prowl. Now, he's a pretty iconic figure anyway, I think. To be honest, if you're a fan of Transformers, you probably know enough about Prowl that I don't really need to go into his uh, life story in any of the sort of genres. Um, really great figure. Um, one that I would highly recommend to any collector of Transformers in general, really. As a classic G1 figure, you you know, other than sort of Prime and Megatron, you know, Prowl is pretty much on the next run from those guys and yeah when you get all the Autobot cars lined up they look fantastic together so it is pretty much a must have for any Transformer collector I think and exactly the reason why I plumped for getting this guy but, but other than these sort of like issues with the box and his gun I'll probably pick up another gun at some point for him and then of course he can be more complete and he'll fit much better into the Transformer display that I hope to have one day. Anyway, I've waffled on a little bit too much there. Um, but I'll just finish off by saying thanks for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this look at one of the most classic of the G1 uh, Autobot cars. And say thank you for watching and see you again.